Today, we're gonna to be talking about a brand new product from Waveform called the Quad Mini Antenna. Now, full disclosure, they did send this over to me free of charge, but the views and opinions in this video are completely mine and I'm not being paid to say anything about the product. Now, the Quad Mini Antenna, it looks like this. It's very sleek, it's very thin and lightweight, and it's omnidirectional. So that's gonna make this a very versatile antenna in terms of where you can and can't place it. Now, unlike the 4x4 MIMO antennas that Waveform sells, you have to have those within the field of view of your cell phone tower and they're directional. So they have to be in a very specific spot to get the best reception and provide you with the best service for your 5G home internet service. Now with this antenna, you don't have to do that because it's omnidirectional. It can receive a signal in all directions instead of being pointed directly at the cell phone tower. And so that's really cool. And so we can install this on the exterior of our home directly. We can install it to a pole. We can install it directly on the interior of our home, just like hanging a picture. Or you can use a brand new system where we thread suction cups into the back of the antenna and then place it in a window. Or you can use a brand new desktop mount that they've developed that will allow you to put this on a table or a desk or any other piece of furniture that you would like and keep that on the inside of your home. Now they did also develop a brand new window entry cable and that cable is going to allow you to install this antenna on the exterior of your home, but you don't have to drill a hole on the outside of your house to get the cabling in to connect it to your gateway. And that's awesome. I wish they had this cable when I bought my original 4x4 MIMO antenna because then I wouldn't have had to drill a hole in the side of my house. But here we are, it is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna test this cable out for you. I got really high hopes for it. It looks awesome. We're gonna walk through the entire setup of this antenna, and then we're gonna do some speed tests and compare how much this antenna improved the service. So without further ado, let's get this thing hooked up. If you ordered the entire kit, you're going to get the wall mount hardware and suction cups, the brand new desktop mount, as well as the UDOT FL pigtail adapters that you need for your gateway, the antenna itself, and a pole mount and not pictured is 10 feet of SMA quad cable and you can change the length if you need to. And then last but not least, you're gonna get the brand new window entry cable. And as you can see, this is a very flexible cable and they've done a good job designing this. You have the thicker end that goes outside the window. It has double-sided tape on the back of both pieces. And then if you'd like to also mount this to your house, you can take these covers off and then put screws in here on top of using the tape to make sure that it's extra secure. And then for everybody that's curious, the thickness on this is roughly 0.08 inches thick. And then for all you metric folks, it is approximately 2.1 millimeters in thickness at the flexible part that's gonna be inside the window. Now, in order to use the suction cups, they literally just thread into the back of the antenna like this. And then when you're all done and you have all four of them installed, it will look something like this. And then you simply just press it onto the window. Now for this, I'm gonna start off using the desktop mount. And for that, you're just gonna run the cabling through the bottom of the mount like you see here. And then you're gonna make sure that the top part right here actually just goes right into place on the antenna right here. And then from there, you're going to just kind of pop everything together. And then you're gonna take these little thumb screws that we got and you're going to thread them into the back of the antenna like this. And when it's all done, it should look something like this. This part is completely user preference, but I'm gonna go ahead and snug these up with an Allen wrench really quick just to make sure that they are secure, but it is not required. Next, we're gonna get this hooked up to my gateway. Now I already have my pigtail connectors connected and the gateway I am using is the Sagem Com Fast 5688W from T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. And as you can see, all my cables are connected and labeled. And for this, all we need to do is just thread each cable onto the correct one that's connected to the gateway. And so for this, I connected mine in the following order with antenna one being LTEM, antenna two being MIMO one, antenna three, 5G NRP, and antenna four being LTE D. 
and each cable is labeled with an antenna number, so it should be straightforward. But I do need to mention that this setup is only for the Sage MCOM Fast 5688W4 T-Mobile. I can't say if this configuration is gonna work for any other modem or gateway, regardless of what service you're using. Uh, I would check Waveform's website to make sure that you're using the correct literature and hookup instructions for your gateway specifically. Now, once you get everything snugged up, it should look like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run some tests here and look at the metrics and look at the data. And we're gonna move the antenna around to a couple of different spots. That's what I really love about this desktop mount. But before we do all of that, we need to get a baseline. And so this is what my service looks like without using an antenna or anything hooked up to the gateway at all. You will see that it shows that we have very good service, which is four out of five bars, but this doesn't really mean anything. We really need to take a look at the metrics in order to see where we're at. And so to do that, we're gonna click on more at the bottom, and then we're gonna click on advanced cellular metrics. And for 4G LTE, this is what we're looking at. I'm gonna put a chart up here and we're gonna be specifically focused on RSSI, RSRQ, RSRP, and SINR. And just real brief what those are. RSSI is received signal strength indicator. RSRQ is reference signal received quality. And RSRP is reference signal received power. SINR is just your signal to noise ratio. And so as you can see, our metrics are not that great. They're not horrible, but they are definitely not that great uh, for 4G LTE. Band B66 is not bad, but I'd really like to see band B2. And so we'll see if we can work that out. If we switch over to 5G, you will see that I'm not even getting 5G at this time. And so hopefully once we get the antenna hooked up, we'll see some improvements. But just to show you where we're at for a reference, we're gonna run a quick speed test and I'm gonna show you what I'm getting straight to the gateway with no antenna or nothing attached. That way we have a good reference baseline to go off of as we move the antenna around and do more testing. As you can see, we have a baseline of 190 megabits per second down with 31.4 megabits per second up and a ping of 18 milliseconds. So now we're gonna switch over to using the antenna and I'm just gonna have it set up here in the basement over on the table next to me and we're gonna see if we can get better numbers than what our baseline is. And when we get back into the firmware here on the app, it looks like we're still at four out of five bars, which uh, is very good in the T-Mobile app, but that picture doesn't really mean anything as I stated before. So we're gonna move over and take a look at the metrics really quick. And as you can see right off the bat, it looks like our signal strength or our RSSI, it did get uh, significantly better going from negative 77 to negative 54. Our RSRQ uh, got slightly worse, it looks like going from negative 13 to negative 14. And then our RSRP went from negative 91 to negative 88, which is just slightly better. Our signal to noise got it uh, looks like slightly better by one. So it went from 15 to 16, but we did switch from band B66 to B2. And so in my opinion, I, I feel like B2 is actually a better band, so that's good. So we'll, I'll be interested to see if we get better results on the speed test. Now, if we switch over here to 5G, if you remember, we didn't get 5G at all on the baseline. Uh, let's see what we get here. So we actually have 5G, so our RSRQ is negative four and our RSRP is negative 35, so that's actually good. That's uh, excellent according to our chart, but our signal to noise being 12 is actually horrible. So that's not very good at all. And that's probably because we're actually in my basement, like I said before, so that should improve as we do more testing and, and move around the actual antenna and the modem and see what we can get. And we are on band N41, which is not a bad band. So now let's just do a speed test really quick and see what we can get. And it looks like we have a ping of 33 milliseconds here. And out the gate, it doesn't look like it's performing as well as our baseline. Right now we're at 131, uh, 132, 34, 33, 36. It's going back and forth, right? So uh, it looks like it's settled on 137 megabits per second down and our upload speed is in the 20s. So 
Uh, before this even finishes, I can tell you that we're not going to exceed what our baseline was. Um, so let's run it one more time and see if we can get better results here. And it looks like, so we're still in the 130s, uh, 140s, 50s. So we hit 163 for our download. We have a ping of 30 milliseconds. And it looks like our uploads are still going to be in the 20s. So we're at 23, 24. Uh, so, you know, let's move the antenna around. I'm going to move the modem and the antenna upstairs to the main floor of my house. And I'm going to keep it on the desktop stand. But let's just move this around and see if we can get a better signal and then get some better performance out of the antenna. After I get done doing all of the testing and moving the antenna and the modem around to a couple different places in my house and testing the desktop and then the actual window mount as well, I'll come back down here and we'll discuss everything. So I moved the gateway upstairs and I had it set up on my dining room table still on the desktop mount and you'll see that we went from having four bars of service to five bars of service. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean anything. So taking a look at the numbers on our 4G LTE, we had an RSSI originally of negative 77 when we were using the antenna in my basement and we went to a negative 42. So there was improvement there. Our RSRQ went from negative 13 to negative 14. So we took a slight hit on that. Our RSRP went from negative 91 to negative 75. So we saw improvement there as well. And then our signal to noise went from 15 to 16, which is an improvement, but it was basically nothing. Um, and then we stayed locked in on band two, which was good. Now, if we take a look at the 5G metrics, our RSRQ went from negative four to negative one. Both of those are good numbers. Our RSRP went from negative 35 to negative seven. Uh, so we saw improvement there, but again, both of those are actually good numbers and our signal to noise for whatever reason on 5G tanked. So we went from 12 to four and four is horrible. 12 in itself is not very good either. On the speed test, I got 153 megabytes per second down with 41.7 megabytes per second up with a ping of 31 milliseconds. And I did run this test again and I got 150 megabytes per second down 51 megabytes per second up and then a ping of 31 milliseconds again and now our download speeds still have not exceeded our baseline of 190 megabits per second but we have doubled our upload speed next i went ahead and i moved the antenna from the desktop mount to the window mount by using the suction cups that thread into the back of the antenna and i placed it in a window on the main level of my home facing or towards the cell phone tower to get the best signal. And you will see that the T-Mobile app shows that we still have excellent service. So we have five out of five bars. And then taking a look at the metrics, you will see that there was not a significant change in terms of metrics by placing the antenna in the window as opposed to having it on my table on the desktop mount. You will see that we took a slight hit in signal to noise, but overall, all of the metrics are within the same brackets on the chart, so to speak, that they were previously. So we probably won't see a significant improvement to our speed tests from the 4G perspective. Now, taking a look at the 5G, it tells a different story. So for our 5G, you will see that all of our metrics look great. Signal to noise is 40. That is the best yet up from four. And our RSRP is negative 68, which is also great and RSRQ negative 11. All of these numbers look good. On the speed tests, I ran this a couple of times just to make sure everything was good to go. And the first run, we got 126 megabits per second down and 46.4 megabits per second up with a ping of 30 milliseconds. Now on the second run, we got 89.8 megabits per second down and 61.5 megabits per second up with a ping of 34 milliseconds. And so we've really done wonders to our upload speeds, but in terms of our download speeds, we haven't been able to even meet our baseline yet. And the same with our ping. So our ping starting out, if you remember, was 18 milliseconds. And we've pretty much been in the 30s for this entire test with the antenna hooked up. And so at this point, it seems kind of discouraging, 
but I don't normally use the Sage Com Fast Gateway as my primary gateway. I've kind of moved on and I now use the Invisigig from Haven Technologies as my primary modem for my T-Mobile 5G home internet. And so I'm gonna hook the antenna up to that and I'm gonna see if we can yield similar results to what I get with my 4x4 MIMO antenna. I'm even gonna place the antenna out there right next to my 4x4 MIMO antenna and see if actually putting it outside will do any good because so far it's been kind of lackluster to be quite honest. For this I used the brand new window entry cable and installation of it was really easy. I just placed it in my window. I made sure the bigger end was outside because that's what's going to connect to the antenna with the smaller end staying inside your house to connect to the gateway. And then you just close your window like you would normally and secure it and it will keep the cable in place for you to either use the mounting hardware or the adhesive to finalize the installation. Before using the antenna, I did run a baseline on my Invisigig with my 4x4 MIMO antenna disconnected. And you will see here that these are the metrics. They don't look very good, but again, there's no antenna or anything connected to the modem, so it's not getting very good signal. And I did run two speed tests for this because the first one was horrific. And you'll see here that um, both of them actually ended up being really bad. But I did get the antenna hooked up after that and I did run a couple of speed tests for that. And so I will show you the results for that here as well. So here are the metrics with the antenna connected to my Invisigig modem and it is outside next to my 4x4 MIMO and you can see they are a lot better. And when I ran my speed test, this thing was cooking. We got 437.10 megabits per second down, 92.82 megabits per second up with a ping of 30 milliseconds. And for comparison, here is a speed test from my 4x4 MIMO antenna connected to the same Invisigig modem. And I got 405.72 megabits per second down, 94.91 megabits per second up with a ping of 41 milliseconds. So it was actually worse. So that led me to think something seems kind of funny here. So I connected my Sage Com gateway back up and I haven't used it in a long time because I don't use it as my primary uh, gateway. I made sure that all the firmware was up to date and that it had been sitting on the network running for a little bit before I tried to retest it. And then when I retested it, I actually got 315 megabits per second down, 83.6 megabits per second up with a ping of 27 milliseconds. And this was using the desktop mount with the antenna sitting on my dining room table uh, and the modem next to it. So it turns out the entire problem, I think, was just the fact that I haven't used my Sage Com gateway in a very long time. It most likely did not have the most current firmware on it, and it was probably trying to download the new firmware and perform a firmware update while we were trying to do the testing. And since I've retested it, I have consistently gotten higher speeds like what I showed you in the previous speed test. And when I placed it outside next to my 4x4 MIMO antenna, it actually performs better, which is crazy. And so I think this antenna is extremely underrated. I really think anybody that chooses to pick this antenna up is going to be extremely happy with it. It's a very versatile antenna with the fact that you can use it both indoors and outdoors. And they've created a method for people who live in apartments or they're renting their home or they just didn't want to drill a hole in the side of their house to be able to get better reception or service with their 5G home internet service provider without causing any kind of structural damage to wherever they live. And I think that in itself just opens this up for everybody. And so if you'd like to check that out, I'm going to put a link down in the description for you guys. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of future uploads. That's all I got for this one. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.